My name is Joe and I play drums in a metal band from the UK. We're based in Sheffield, we're called Kurakuma. This is our debut album which came out earlier this year in February, Born of Obsidian. It's available on vinyl, CD, cassette, digital of course. And earlier today for the first time I sat down and went through all the costs associated with making this album with a fine tooth comb and then started to look at the figures that were making back the revenue. And we knew rough ballpark figures, of course, um, but to see the figures there in black and white, it was, it was interesting to say the least. And in this video, I'm gonna go through them with you so you can see what it's like to be a DIY independent band, whatever you wanna call it, in 2022, recording an album. Yeah, we decided to do kind of everything about this album ourselves. That was a choice we made. We got a couple of offers from labels, but it just didn't quite fit with the way we wanted to do things. Um, we are perfectionists, you might say, in that regard. And also, obviously, this situation is unique to us. And there were things we did here that perhaps other bands wouldn't do. And there are things that we wouldn't do again. We've learned so much through through this process. So I'm not saying that this is the only way to make an album, this is how much it's gonna cost and things like that. I'm just saying, this is our experience. Hopefully you'll, you'll get some benefit from hearing about it. We started talking to a couple of producers that we really respected, that we wanted to work with on, on this album. And one of them was Sanford Parker, who's based in Chicago in the US. And actually we had a US tour booked for the summer of 2020 and it seemed to work like we, we thought why don't we go out and record this album with Sanford before we even start the tour do the dates come home and then we've got a, a great tour and a great album all in one go so that was the plan but then obviously 2020 happened Covid and everything and we had to cancel the tour it just didn't happen but we still wanted to use that time to to record the album Obviously, we'd got the idea in our heads and, you know, not much was happening as I'm sure you can all remember. So we thought, let's use the time wisely. Ask Sanford if he'd be okay to fly over. Um, and he said, yeah. And so the plan was to record the album with him in the UK. Now, obviously, this was kind of one of the things that was a bit out of the ordinary. Um, normally, you wouldn't have to pay for a producer to come from the US to the UK, but that's what we had to do. That we had to pay for his flights, obviously. I think they were about $750. And I've got the fee that we paid to the producer. Um, and in total, that was uh, $4,000, Obviously, that's quite a lot. That's a huge expense. Included in that was Sanford's flights, it was the studio time, him producing, engineering, recording the album. And then part of that was also payment for him to mix the album afterwards. Yeah, so that was our first payment. Obviously quite a big one, especially when you're then considering we're paying for a studio on top of that as well. Now with the studio, we actually got that at a discounted rate. Um, my, a relative of mine owns a studio in London called Narcissus Studios. Um, it's a really good studio. Uh, Jarvis Cock has recorded there. They, when we showed up, they even told us Rihanna had recorded there recently. Now, um, I think normally they charge £500 a day for the studio, but because he was cutting me a deal, he told me he didn't make anything on it. Um, we paid £350 a day for the studio. Now, with that, we got an engineer um, who actually turned out to be a lot of help. Um, so we, we essentially kind of had two engineers or a producer and an engineer working with us on the album. So we were paying £350 a day for the studio and we used it for seven days. So 350 times seven, that's £2,450. So that's the second figure. This was our first real experience kind of in a really nice studio and we wanted to enjoy it and yeah, as a bit of background to this, I've got to say, you know, we've, all three of us, had a bit of cash lying around that we thought we could use on this album, and we were happy to spend it, and we were happy to kind of see it as almost a holiday. You know, it was a week down in London. Um, fortunately, we didn't have to pay any money for accommodation because we, um, a pub put us up down there, which was very, very kind of them. 
Um, so that was great. But yeah, we also ended up hiring some gear. I think George's bass wasn't, there was something up with it. I think the action was wrong on it or something like that. It wasn't set up right. And so we ended up hiring a bass guitar for the whole seven days and then some other guitar pedals. And that gear hire for seven days came in at £806.40. And then I've also factored in the petrol we spent. We had to go and pick Sanford up from the airport, drive down to London, drive back, drive all around London, which <laughs> if you've ever driven in London, um, we ended up using probably about £200 worth of petrol over the week plus the days that Sanford was with us. So, so far on them four costs, we've already spent £6,656.40, but the the album was recorded and we'd already paid for mixing. Now, if you're in a band, I'm sure you'll understand this, but sometimes when it comes to getting a sound or getting something to sound the way it does in your head, it's, it's probably one of the most challenging things about being in a band. In the end, we didn't really use Sanford for mixing. His mixers weren't really resonating with what we wanted from this album. Fortunately, he refunded us some of the money um, but yeah, the total for still using him was, as I said earlier, £3,200. So that was another kind of cost that perhaps, um, hopefully you wouldn't have to pay. We, we paid for a bit of his mixing, because he gave us a few mixes, but they just weren't right for us. So then we had to go and find someone else to mix the record for us, which is not the easiest thing in the world. Um, so yeah, the next expense is actually 1,500 on the mixing, which we got our friend Chris to do. Chris wanted to spend a lot of time on the album, and he really did. He's actually a live sound engineer who we've known from the start. He did our very first gig at West Street Live in Sheffield, and now he's the sound guy for Fontaine's DC. And he'd said to us before, in fact, he, he recorded the demo for us, which he did for absolutely free, which was great. Um, he'd said that he wanted to sink his teeth into kind of a studio project and it just so happened that we now needed the whole album to be mixed from the ground up essentially. So it really worked out in that regard but because Chris was still kind of learning exactly what to do it took a very long time and we worked on it and because we are perfectionists you know that only added to this issue. We spent a lot of time, I think it was about two months going back and forth you know, online, in person, and getting this sound in the way we wanted and that we were happy with. So yeah, in the end, we paid Chris 1,500 for mixing the record. Next, we needed to get it mastered, which is a simpler task, and we hit up James Plotkin, who had come recommended to us from some friends. Um, he was amazing, actually. Um, he charged us $300 and did loads of extra stuff that kind of wasn't in the initial quote. Um, I would really recommend James if you're in a metal band and need your record mastering. So he supplied the digital and the vinyl masters, which are two different things. We paid him $300, which is £240.19 at the current exchange rate. So now the music side of things is kind of done and dusted, but you know, when it comes to producing an album, that's far from over. So next, well, in the background throughout this time, we'd been working with our artist friend, Mila Kay, who ended up only charging us 200 pounds, or was it 250? It was one or the two, I'll put 250 just to be safe. So he ended up providing, you know, the artwork there, and then everything else, we've got the insert. He did all the layouts as well. Um, he hooked us up with that price and um, yeah, big up Mila because he's, he's been great. So the front artwork, all the layouts for all the physical formats and even a, a bit of art for kind of the Bandcamp page, £250 let's say. Now next we get on to the actual physical copies. We didn't have to do all three physical copies but we wanted to. I'm glad we did, we've sold plenty of each. So yeah, the vinyl version. Um, we got 250 records made, 125, we've got two variants. And then you get five test presses in with that, which we'll get onto a bit later. Um, that came to £2,435.40. 
So just under £10 per record we're paying for them. With the CDs, it actually worked, at, there was a price break at 300 So we got 300 CDs and that was £842.40. With the tapes, we got 100 of them and they were £346.74. When we were building up to the release, before we'd actually received the physical copies, we got a bit of artwork done, like some mock-ups to, to show what the final physical formats would look like and that cost £50, so I've put that in there as well. Um, we, we've got some stickers, we put one sticker each uh, in with each order that we post out. They were £74.90. And then really the final cost that we paid, which is not one of the smallest ones, was for promotion. We worked with a guy called Simon Glacken, who I would really recommend. He, he's been really great, to be honest. Um, and we paid one, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but we paid him 1,500. From our experience in the past, that might sound like a lot, but I do think we got our money's worth with Simon more than anyone else we've used for promo. And then one, it's not really a cost, it, but it's like, you know, I'm not even factoring in all the kind of hours that we put in to doing all this and, and well, obviously making the record and, and planning it and then packing and posting it. That's just being in a band, isn't it? Um, but yeah, you know, none of that is accounted for in the price. So the grand total for all the costs is thirteen thousand eight hundred ninety-six pounds and three pence, and that is a lot more, a lot more than we expected to spend when we started out on this journey, and it it wouldn't happen again. And also, like I said, when we we're in the studio, you know, the engineer would come to us and he'd be like, "Are you okay to pay this for the hire?" And we'd just be like, "Yeah," and we wouldn't really think about it. Next time we would be a lot more strict with what we spent, but because this was the first time doing it, you know, we didn't mind splashing the cash, so to speak. Anyway, let's get on to what we actually made or might make, because what I'm going to do basically is be optimistic and give you the figures for if we sell every, everything that we've ordered. Um, obviously we haven't done that yet, we've sold a really good chunk of it, of all the formats. And obviously with the digital it's hard to say how many we might sell, so I'm just going to tell you with the digital how many we have sold so far. So yeah, we got the test presses in, we listened to them, we liked them, we actually got f uh, five of them. So three members of the band all kept one and then we said why don't we just sell the, the other two. And with test presses you can sell them for a bit more money. So we put them online for £45 each, there was only two, and they went within literally like two, two or three minutes. Um, so we made £90 from the two test presses. Like I said, we've ordered 250 copies of vinyl. Now, we've, we've, we're selling them at £18 on, on Bandcamp. Um, yeah, so everything we're selling is through Bandcamp. But yeah, the vinyl's priced at £18 on Bandcamp. So if we were to sell all 250 copies of that, we would make £4,500. We haven't done that yet, we've sold about half. With the CDs, we've priced them at £9, so if we were to sell all 300 CDs, then we'd make 2700 We have 100 tapes, we're selling them at £8, so we'll make £800 if we sell all of those. Digitally, the album is priced at £7, and we've actually sold 131 copies of that so far. So that adds up to £917 so far. Obviously we'll keep selling that as we go forward, but it's hard to say what the final total might be. And that's kind of the thing with this album. It's like our first one. Hopefully it's set us up for kind of success with later albums as well. Obviously that's how a band works. So there's definitely an element of kind of like, let's kind of invest almost on this first album, make a really good job of it, and that'll set us up. Um, and people will check us out and it'll just be good for the band, you know. That's also another reason why we perhaps spent a bit more than we anticipated on this first one. Streaming, as you know, you know, everyone's talking about it, it doesn't really make you that much money. I'd estimate, I think Jake sent me a payment from Spotify we, of £155 the other day. So I'm going to estimate that about £100 of that is from streams of the new album. It might be a bit less, to be honest. Apart from streaming, all those figures that I've just mentioned, everything that we sold basically has gone through Bandcamp, which has been a good platform for us. I don't know how good it's going to be going forward because it's just been taken over. 
But yeah, Bandcamp has been great, but it does take a cut from every sale you make, obviously. With them, usually it's 15%, but we hit the mark because we made so many sales, I think, just as we started to sell this album, the cut changed from 15% to 10%, so I'm going to go on the 10% cut to get you the final figure. So before the cut, the income from Bandcamp plus streaming was... Well, it's not even was. It could be if we sell everything. £9,007. Now, with the 10% taken off that, we're left with £8,106.30. <laughs> so, obviously, these aren't exact, exact figures, but hopefully they're giving you a really good idea. Obviously, if we were to sell these physical copies at gigs, which we do, then the 10% cut isn't being taken. But, basically, rough ballpark figures... The total costs are £13,896.03 and the total revenue if we are to sell everything is about £8,106.30 so obviously that leaves us with a deficit of £5,789.73. I've not factored in postage costs and packaging because essentially the customer pays for them at checkout. But yeah, there you have it. Um, there are definitely ways we could have kept the price down on this, but this is what happened. This, are, this is our experience for, for my band um, and where we're at right now. Fortunately, if I was to do a video, and I maybe could do a video, on you know the band as a whole, we do make money on other things. For example, we've got, um, we've got caps, I've got one over there, that say, make sludge grim again. And that's actually, that, that's made us like £2,000 over the course of the band. Um, we sell a lot of t-shirts, they make us money. You know, we play gigs. Back in the day, we used to play for free, now we get paid. And we, we can make money on gigs and tours a little bit. Not a lot at all, but, you know, overall, the band is probably about breaking even. But this video was just focused on the album process. Maybe next time we'll have a label to do it for us. It has been a lot of effort, but it's been worth it. You know, I'm glad we did everything ourselves. Um, we tried to do it to the best of our abilities. Being in a band is extremely challenging, extremely tough. It can be difficult financially. But obviously I do have to say, you know, it's completely worth it. When, when this is here and you can hold it in your hands and when it represents kind of years or, or even decades of kind of just work and passion and creativity then that is priceless and then if it's well received even better you know that's just the the delight the joy of being in a band when when the music you make um means something to people and they they really enjoy it unfortunately with this album a lot of people have got a lot out of it but yeah let me know what you think thanks for watching also, one final edit, I can't believe I forgot to mention we rented out this billboard on like a major road in Sheffield. I think that lasted for a week and that cost us £200, but that was 100% worth it.